does hypnotism work on everybody? I imagine there's some, I would kind of have a fear of losing control while going under that influence. So how do you breach that with other people and, or does it work on everybody? So the first thing that I learned in this business is the number one job that I have is to educate people because most people are afraid because of what they've heard about it. And so it's really nothing like what most people think. It's really nothing like what most people think. Most people think they're going to be out of their body. They're going to be out of control, that they're just going to kind of disappear or something. And that would kind of give me or whoever they're working with who does the hypnosis the full control. But that is so far from the truth. Nobody can control you. You can do things like what you see on stage. That's very real. But we have to remember that those people came up out of the audience and onto that stage of their own free will. The things that they do on that stage are not things that they would typically not do in their real life, mm -hmm. but it's kind of like you always have these defense mechanisms. They keep you safe. They want to make sure that you're okay, that you're going to survive. That's what they're you're designed to do is, is to protect yourself. And so even, I'll kind of put it like this. So imagine three o'clock in the morning, you're in the deepest, soundest sleep of the night and a strange noise takes place in your house. What do you do? you wake up, mm. right? You wake up immediately because your subconscious mind never sleeps and it's always on alert. It absorbs everything from the senses when those senses are active and your auditory senses and things like that are active even when you're in those lowest brainwave states, what we call sleep or deep hypnosis. So you've always got these defense mechanisms there designed to keep you safe. You're never out of control. So translate that to a hypnotherapy session. If I were to say something to someone that went against their morals or their values or was wrong for them, they're going to pop out just like that right? So they have the defenses. You never lose control. This is really about giving you control. And there's a big difference between what you see on a stage and what I do. What you see on a stage is hypnosis, and that's for entertainment purposes. What I do is hypnotherapy, which is hypnosis combined with a therapeutic modality. And that's for more of a clinical setting. So I don't do a whole lot of the instant or rapid inductions, which is a very quick way to put someone under. Those will work for pretty much anyone. However, it's a consensual type of a modality, which means if, if I walk up to someone, they could be the most suggestible person in the world. But if they say, no, I don't want to be hypnotized, there's not a single thing I can do. So you never actually lose control. And so what a hypnotherapy session looks like versus a hypnosis session is I just have someone laid back in the chair, got a nice, big, comfortable recliner. They lay back, they put some headphones on. A lot of times I'll put an eye mask on because we want to get them out of this world and we want to go into the internal world. It's not a back and forth conversation. It's me talking to them through a microphone. I have a processor and a music studio on my computer. And so I process it and they're just listening to me talk. And a lot of times they'll either fall asleep or they'll kind of go in and out, or they'll be focused on a specific task that I give to them. So that's what a hypnotherapy session looks like. It's a very relaxing thing. It's not a scary thing, yeah. but a lot of people are scared when they first come in. They're like, well, I've never done this. But once they do it the first time, they're like, wow, that was amazing. That felt wonderful. I can't wait to do this again.